hey what's up welcome to one little coder gpt4 api is going to come soon so in this video i would like to tell you what is that new gpt4 api contains and how does it look like and how can you request for access and join the waiting list to get the gpt4 api access so these are the three things primarily we are going to cover in this video most of this information is from open ai's latest gpt4 blog there is a caveat when you have to apply for the gpt4 api access you have to add your organizational id which also i'll show in the video how to gain and then add it for your own gpt4 api access to start with now i'm going to show you the gpt4 api details so let me quickly go to that particular section of this context length will take me there if you look at the gpt4 api access so you have to sign up for the waiting list i'll show you the sign up form and then how do you fill in later on but if you see the details around it the details are quite interesting like for example previously we have been seeing context around 2000 tokens 4000 tokens now what is a context in terms of large language model when you ask a question to a large language model there is a particular number of tokens it can take in a given prompt like for example if your sentence uh, or the input that you want to give already has 3000 tokens that means when you have the conversation after 3000 it may not have the context so the context is quite important because a lot of times when something does not fit in a context that's when people do fine fine tuning embedding and all these things now what gpt4 is doing here is gpt4 has a context length of 8192 it's it's almost double of what gpt 3.5 or a chat gpt the latest gpt3 turbo model could do one 8192 is quite amazing it's like ridiculous but they are also providing limited access to another model which is 32768 that's about like 50 pages like you can now literally send 50 pages of text to chat gpt plus um or gpt 4 api and then ask questions and then it's going to answer from this now i don't understand why in this case somebody would do fine tuning or embedding because you can literally send 30000 characters that that opens a huge set of opportunities imagine like you have got legal documents and you want to summarize previously you always had to come around this 4000 ish tokens 4096 i think that is something that you always had to do but today or when you get gpt4 api access you don't have to be bothered about it if you especially have the second model so there are going to be two models gpt4 gpt4 32k so if you get access to gpt4 32k then your context length is 32768 this number actually reminds me when i studied computer science this is kind of the upper limit of integer so 32768 that's about 50 pages of text and if you get access to gpt4 that's about 8192 tokens so that's that's massive massive improvement in terms of context length and in terms of pricing let's like we had to also discuss about pricing if you talk about pricing this is going to be 6.06 per 1000 token so for every 1000 prompt token so now there are two kinds of token one is a prompt token when you ask a question that's a prompt token and when it responds back that's a completion token so you ask a question how are you gpt is going to say i am fine so let's say how are you how are you let's assume this is three tokens now when it responds back three is prompt token now when it responds back it's going to say i am fine i am fine so this is going to be three token so you used three prompt token and three completion token so what they are saying is the pricing is 0.06 per 1000 prompt token and 0.12 like the double of it for 1000 completion token so they're saying like we are still improving the model quality and all these things but for now this is the pricing so the pricing for prompt token is different and the completion token is different this also looks slightly different from what chat gpt has been priced but again um there there is a huge hype around gpt4 so i think people would be willing to pay So the next thing that I wanted to highlight here is that you can right now when you get GPT-4 access, you can make only text-only request. 
So GPT-4, unlike GPT-3.5, unlike GPT-3, unlike the chat GPT model, GPT-4 is a multi-modal model, which means you can send question like this image, ask a question in text. So you send an image, ask a question, it's going to give you response back in text. While you can do this from the chat GPT plus interface, which might also come to the playground later on. But for now, when you get access to GPT-4 API, you would be able to only send a text and receive a text. You cannot send images. So image inputs are still limited in alpha. So now the model uh, is going to, when you get access to the model, so there are going to be like model will get updated uh, with the uh, new versions all the time. So the pricing here, like for this model, at least the pricing is 0 0.03 per 1k prompt token, 0 0.06 per 1k completion token. So it's, so the, the 32k model, you can see the 32k model is almost double the price of the default model. So you have default model that is 0 0.03 per 1k token. And uh, the 32k model is 0 0.06, like double the price. And um, yeah, so it's it's again like quite expensive, I would say, uh, if you compare it with the uh, chat GPT's um, $2 per 1 million. Um, yeah, so th this, this uh, looks slightly expensive, but uh, let's see, like, it depends again, what do you want to do with this? There are so many things that you could still do it with chat GPT model, like we have already covered in this channel. How do you write a long essay? How do you uh, use chat GPT to connect with Google sheet, Google slide, Google docs, and then do a lot of things. A lot of things could be done with that. You don't have to pay for an expensive APA, but if you're going to pay for it, then you know that for sure you're going to get few things really good. One, it is really good in uh, creative tasks. I just finished the demo by uh, the open by Greg OpenAI CEO, CEO or CTO, co-founder, something. So, there, there were like really good capabilities that were shown, especially when you can paste a long text and then ask it to summarize, which wouldn't have been possible with the previous chat GPT um, API. And also you can generate, you know, better code now, which wouldn't have been possible with that. Like you can literally ask it to summarize with the starting letter, like for example, G, Q, A, whatever that is, which wouldn't have been possible previously. And a lot of people have been saying how improved the latest chat GPT, uh, latest GPT for more API or uh, chat GPT plus responses. So which means there is a definitely an advantage that you're going to gain, but that advantage comes with a cost and uh, the default rate limit at this point is 40k tokens per minute, which means um, you can send 40,000 tokens, like 40,000 tokens overall. And you can for a minute, you can send 200 requests. Um, if you are going to send more than 200 requests in a minute, then um, you would breach the rate limit. So I'm not sure if it is like at this point, at least you can build production level application on it. But definitely this is exactly what OpenAI is offering now as part of GPT-4. To quickly summarize, GPT-4 has got a multimodal model. It, it's a multimodal model, uh, which means you can send text and uh, image and then ask question and then get text back. But the API will have only text at this point images are going to be limited only in alpha context length has been a huge discussion in the large language model world looks like gpt4 has got an amazing context length the base model is going to have 8192 token and the 32k model is going to have 32768 context length it's amazing their pricing is going to be two tier prompt token and completion token so the base model is going to have 0 0.03 for 1k prompts prompt tokens and uh, 1.06 for completion tokens and the other one is the 32k model it's almost the like exactly double of it and the default rate limit for your api call you can send 40000 tokens in one minute and also it could be only maximum 200 requests um, per minute per minute like it's, it's like 60 seconds so imagine like you have got like 200 customers Everybody is making a call in one minute. The 200th first customer cannot make it. I'm not sure how unrealistic or realistic, depending upon what kind of business you have. But this is exactly what uh, what they are offering as part of APA. Now we knew about the APA, context length, pricing. 
let's get into how to request access the sign up waiting list so now i link this in the youtube description so you can directly click and then do it click sign up and that will take you to this gpa4 api waiting list you can almost enter the details quite easily i can say abdul and then i can say r i can give my email id i can do all these things quite easily i can give company name my company name is one little coder inc if there is a company like that then the main important thing is organization id so now how do you get the organization id is exactly what i'm going to show you now go to your um, open ai account like platform.openai.com go to your account click this personal or whatever that shows there the account and once you click that and then say manage account once you say manage account you would reach this place called usage and here you can click settings once you click settings it's going to show you organization id and that organization id is what you can copy and paste it here to use it so this organization id once you paste it then you have to say what are you going to use gpt4 for building a new product most likely i think they would like it or integrate into an existing product and then you know like you can give context around why do you want particularly gpt4 access like what did you try with gpt 3.5 what did not work out and click join waiting list and that's it you join the waiting list now to gain access as soon as it is available one more thing that you can do to increase your chance accelerate your chance is to support open ai evolves i have not explored explored open ai evolves much but you can this is like an evaluation framework if you contribute to this that will also help you accelerate your api access process so open ai particularly wants to encourage people to contribute to this which in turn by they are rewarding by giving them api access sooner so this is overall how you sign up for api waiting list and then you know when you get lucky you are going to get api access so overall in this video we learned about gpt4 api pricing context length and how to request access to join the waiting list i hope this was helpful to you in learning to submit your api waiting list do it soon everybody is doing it in the next video we'll probably try to explore certain interesting aspects of gpt4 see you in another video peace